Namaskar and Guten Tag. It is my pleasure and privilege to talk to you again, this time to introduce a new session in our series of India at 75. As you are all aware, we launched the official celebrations of India at 75 on 12th of March 2021, when Honorable Prime Minister of India inaugurated the celebrations in New Delhi. Thereafter, all our Indian embassies and consulates abroad have been celebrating this momentous occasion through a series of activities in which we try to showcase achievements of India not only in the field of science and technology, socio-economic reforms, but also showcasing the unique historical and cultural heritage of India. You would recall that we did the first such event on 22nd of March 2021 when we had showcased the rich historical traditions of the state of Bihar on the occasion of their state foundation day on 22nd March. In this series, we now come to bring to you another interesting event in which we are going to showcase the achievements of India in the field of science and technology. Besides being the 75th year of independence of India next year, right now we are also celebrating the 70th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between India and Germany. We in the consulate are also making a humble effort to showcase the achievements in the field of the excellent bilateral cooperation that we have had with Germany for the last 70 years in different areas, including in the field of science and technology. Therefore, this series, which we are beginning today, is an important step in our efforts to also showcase the cooperation in the field of science and technology and vocational education between India and Germany. In this series, we bring together professors, teachers and academicians who have excelled in different fields to promote the cooperation in the field of science and technology between India and Germany. In the first program, there will be an interview of Professor Dr. Binesh Joseph uh, from the Gutter University in Frankfurt. Uh, Dr. Joseph is a renowned physicist and he began his academic career in India and thereafter uh, spending many years in Japan and in Germany. Today, he has become a professor of physics in the Gutter University. His journey undoubtedly is an inspiration for scores of students both in India and in Germany. The interview is being conducted by Mr. Amog Kashyap. He is a master's student in Darmstadt Hochschule. And in this interesting session, uh, Professor Joseph is not only going to share his own journey, but he is also going to provide important tips and guidance as to how to prepare oneself for higher education in Germany. This is not only about the educational opportunities in Germany, but also an effort to showcase the individual journeys of different achievers. Professor Binesh Joseph's journey also is a very interesting uh, experience and I am sure as you will witness and hear his experiences, you will feel inspired. It is often said that when we see and witness the success stories, often we are not able to appreciate the amount of hard work, toil and dedication that goes into making a person a successful person. Therefore, this experience sharing by Professor Joseph is also going to be a motivational session for all of us as our students prepare for higher education. I am also sure that this will create newer opportunities for cooperation between India and Germany in the field of science and technology and higher education. We look forward to your feedback and comments as we progress ahead with this series and we also look forward to your support as in the past to all our new initiatives. Once again, heartfelt thanks to all of you and it has been a pleasure interacting with you. Thank you. Namaskar. 
Hello everyone, welcome to our first interactive session between students and professors at the Consulate General of India, Frankfurt. I am Amok Kashyap, a master's student pursuing Master of Science in Electrical Engineering and Information Technology at the Darmstadt University of Applied Sciences. Today we have with us Dr. Benesh Joseph, Principal Investigator and Research Group Leader at the Goethe University, Frankfurt. It is a pleasure to have you with us here today, sir. Would you tell us something about yourself? Thank you, Amok. Um, as you mentioned, um, I'm a principal investigator and research group leader at the Institute of Biophysics of the Goethe University. Uh, I hope that uh, I can tell more about myself uh, uh, as we go through this uh, discussion. Sure. So this is my first question to you. As India celebrates 75 years of its independence, how do you see the development in the education in India from the perspective of someone working outside of India? So, as you know, we, India always had uh, great institutions of teaching and research. Uh, and what we are seeing in the past 10, 15 years is a significant increase in the number of top level institutions funded by the central government. So, so proportionately, the scientific output has increased, uh, but we can also see that in terms of productivity, we are still behind countries like China, Japan, or USA, or many European countries. So what that means is that the government must continue the investment uh, mm -hmm. for creating these top level institutions and at the same time, uh, create new strategies to strengthen existing institutions like the state universities or private universities from which most of the students graduate. Sure. This is my second question to you. Can you briefly explain your journey so far? What was the driving factor for you to pursue a research-based career? I see a lot of young professionals going for industries. So this is really interesting to me. This is a very interesting question. Yeah. So um, the curiosity uh, to know more about different phenomena surrounding us has been there uh, in me since childhood. Yeah. But turning that into a scientific career has been inspired initially by some of my teachers, like Dr. Ignatius Konikara, and later heavily supported by many of my mentors, um, uh, for example, like Professor Kobayashi, Professor HK, Professor Bordignan, or Professor Prisner. So uh, my entry into the um, uh, international world of science started with uh, a Master of Engineering uh, from the Graduate School of Engineering in Osaka University in Japan. And uh, after that, I decided to uh, move to CIS Cotton Institute of Technology or ETH Zurich in Switzerland uh, to do a PhD in biophysics. And at this very uh, key turning point in, in a scientific career, I decided to come to Frankfurt for a postdoctoral research. Yeah? And uh, this turned out to be, in fact, the best decision in my whole career because I got tremendous support, uh, especially from my uh, mentor, Professor Prisner, and also from many people in the university. Uh, which helped me to develop my own research field, um, uh, and and that eventually led to the led to establishing my independent research group in 2019 at the Institute of Biophysics uh, at the Goethe University. Wow, <laughs> that is very inspiring. So my next question to you is: Physics, biology, and chemistry look to be segregated fields for the eyes of a common man. But somehow this seems to be one entity for you. How is that? Yeah, um, I would say this uh, interdisciplinary approach is rather common, uh, especially in natural sciences. Yeah? So by taking tools and knowledge from physics, chemistry and biology, uh, we can address more complex problems uh, to get a, a detailed understanding of the underlying principles. So, so as you would imagine, this is more demanding clearly, but uh, we see that education also already changed in that direction. So if you look in the life sciences, for example, uh, instead of going for pure streams, uh, students take lectures in maths, physics, chemistry, and biochemistry. Yeah? So this would continue to be the approach and the research would get even more interdisciplinary in the future. Sure. Yeah. Then my next question to you. Um, could you shed some light on the type of research done by your research group? Yeah, so, so very briefly, uh, uh, we study how biomolecular nanomachines couple uh, different forms of energy into mechanical work mm -hmm. uh, to achieve substrate translocation across, across biological membranes. Yeah? So these protein complexes are like gatekeepers of the cells. Uh, they control the entry and exit of molecules into the cells. And, and many of the drugs act by modulating the activity of such protein complexes. Yeah? 
So briefly, uh, we use a technique called electron spin resonance spectroscopy as the major biophysical tool. Uh, and using this technique, uh, we can characterize um, electron-electron interactions or interaction of an unpaired electron with surrounding nuclei. And, and this kind of experiments uh, give us uh, insights on how these nanomachines function, uh, which would eventually help us to design uh, new drug molecules, which can modulate their activity uh, or to understand how they how they function. Sure. Thank yeah. you. And my next question to you, um, what is your advice to students who are confused if they should accept a job offer from a multinational company or pursue a doctoral degree? You know, um, so this is uh, probably many students have faced this question, I assume, yeah. So um, a doctoral degree should be motivated by passion, yeah. So often uh, the path is not easy. Um, uh, um, it requires a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work. Uh, but in the process, you acquire deep knowledge, uh, but in a narrow field. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but at the same time, you acquire a lot of additional skills like critical and analytical thinking. You learn how to uh, handle large data sets and analyze them. You you learn presentation skills, communication skills. So all this will help you uh, in the future to make a better career. Yeah? Uh, to, so to answer your question, um, there is no single answer to that. Uh, yeah. One has to consider all these different aspects and, and make a decision for himself or herself. Thank you for this. I think I have more clarity with that for myself now. <laughs> How does financial status look like during the course of the degree? Um, do universities in Germany offer any aids or grant to students? or do they have to search for scholarships themselves? So uh, in, in Germany, majority of the PhDs are uh, employed as research associates through an employment contract with the university. Yeah? Uh, but several PhD positions are also funded through scholarships from private or public funding agencies. So in summary, what I can say is that a PhD position is always funded through either through an employment contract or through some kind of scholarships. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So the next question to you is, is, is the possibility to pursue a doctoral degree equal to both postgraduates from a technical university as well as a Hochschule university? Yeah, so the, 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 in Germany, the PhDs are offered mostly by regular universities. Yeah. Um, so still, it could be possible for someone who graduated from a university of applied sciences to obtain a PhD by moving to a regular university. Yeah? Um, the important point here might be to find a position um, where your skills and knowledge match with the PhD position so that the supervisor can offer this position. Yeah? Yeah. So once this happens, the university might ask you to do some additional courses uh, before formally uh, acknowledging your admission to the doctoral program. Uh, so in, in general, admission to PhD programs are very competitive uh, and uh, for someone uh, coming from a University of Applied Sciences, it might take a little bit more extra effort to get into a position, but it's not impossible. That's very reassuring yeah, yeah. in case I change to pursue. Yeah, good luck to you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So my next question to you is, um, I wanted to know how big is your team and is there any apprenticeship? or internship or even thesis possible at your research group? Yeah, so currently uh, my group has four PhD students um, and two master's students. Uh, and sure, we have we often have uh, students coming for internship or master thesis, uh, but at the same time, the positions are also limited, um, mainly for the reasons of space. So uh, usually students contact well in advance um, so that we can you know, arrange uh, the space uh, in the right time. In continuation to this question, so I want to ask what do you look for in a PhD student? Yeah, so uh, you know when we look for a PhD student, uh, the first thing uh, first thing I look uh, is, is, is a good match between the knowledge and experience of the students uh, to the requirements of the project. Yeah? So if there is a good match, uh, then obviously we will look into the grades. This is important and when possible, we will also look for a positive feedback from the former supervisors, you know, in terms of work style, knowledge, skills, uh, interpersonal skills, etc. You know, uh, 
but um, the most important criterion is to have a good match in terms of your knowledge and skills to the advertised position. You know? Sure. Yeah. So I am from electronics and communication engineering background. And after, after speaking to you, now I'm motivated in this field <laughs> and say, after five years, I want to uh, pursue a field which is very familiar to you. So what is my process or what should I follow in order to make it a success? Yeah, so, you know, biophysics is a very broad field, you know, um, um, probably one of the most interdisciplinary field in the life sciences. Yeah. So uh, encompassing topics like bioelectronics or even uh, quantum biology. So, for example, the bioelectronic devices for measuring or harnessing biological activity um, or, or uh, you know, modulating or sensing cellular behavior using electrical signals or, or bio-inspired um, signaling techniques for nano devices or, you know, some of the examples for the interface between electronics and uh, living systems. So if you're genuinely interested, uh, I think there is always an opportunity for someone like you to come to biophysics, yeah? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, that is really inspiring and um, really motivated me enough. Um, maybe in the future, I really do consider this field. And uh, thank you very much for this interactive session and to our first interactive session here at the Consulate General of India, Frankfurt. And would you like to say something to other students who are aspiring and looking forward to for inspiration? Yeah, so um, definitely uh, pursuing an academic career is really something worth trying for it. You know, you, you are driven by uh, your curiosity and you enjoy a lot of freedom. Uh, uh, and independence in what you do. So, um, and uh, Germany is one of the best places to pursue this career as well. So, uh, I really encourage people to consider this as well. And I would be happy to, you know, answer your queries or questions uh, in case you have. Uh, don't hesitate to get back to me. And uh, thank you for your time, Amok. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Zafir.